Hi boys and girls, Miss Wardrop here with a read aloud. I know it's been a really long time since I've been able to do a read aloud with you, so I'm super excited to introduce for a read aloud our very first novel, Ramona and Her Father. This is by a famous author named Beverly Cleary. She wrote a whole series of Ramona books. And if you look at this right here, that is a Newbery Honors. That means out of all the children's novels that were written that year, hers was one of the best. So we're going to listen to this and I want you to think while I'm reading this first section today, what kind of story is this? Is it a biography where it tells about um, a famous person? Is it a narrative nonfiction? Is it fiction? And if it is fiction, is it fantasy or realistic fiction? So listen carefully to hear what kind of story it is. The first chapter is called Payday. Yeep, sang Ramona Quimby. One warm September afternoon, as she knelt on a chair at the kitchen table to make out her Christmas list, she had enjoyed a good day in second grade, and she looked forward to working on her list. For Ramona, a Christmas list was a list of presents she hoped to receive, not presents she planned to give. Yeep, she sang again. Thank goodness today is payday, remarked Mrs. Quimby, as she opened the refrigerator to see what she could find for supper. Yeep! sang Ramona as she printed mice or guinea pig on her list with purple crayon. Next to Christmas and her birthday, her father's payday was her favorite day. His payday meant treats. Her mother's payday from her part-time job at the doctor's office meant they could make payments on the bedroom the Quimby's had added to their house when Ramona was in first grade. What's all this yeeping about? asked Mrs. Quimby. I'm making a joyful noise, Ramona explained. Only I don't know what kind of joyful noise to make, so I made up my own. Hooray and wow, joyful noises to Ramona, had not sounded right. So she had settled on yeep because it sounded happy, but not too rowdy. Isn't that all right, she asked, as she began to add minor bird that talks to her list. Yeep is fine if that's the way you feel about it, reassured Mrs. Quimby. Ramona printed cuckoo clock on her list while she wondered what treat would be this payday. Maybe since it was Friday, they could all go to a movie if her parents could find one suitable. Both Ramona and her big sister Beezus, whose real name was Beatrice, wondered what went on in all those other movies. They planned to find out the minute they were grown up. That was one thing they agreed on. Or maybe their father would bring presents, a package of colored paper for Ramona, a paperback book for Beezus. I wish I could think of something interesting to do with leftover pot roast and creamed cauliflower, remarked Mrs. Quimby. Leftovers, yuck, thought Ramona. Maybe Daddy will take us to Whopper Burger for supper for payday, she said. A nice, juicy hamburger spiced with relish, French fries, crisp on the outside and mealy inside and a little paper cup of coleslaw at the Whopper Burger restaurant were Ramona's favorite payday treats. Eating close together in a booth made Ramona feel snug and cozy. She and Beezus never quarreled at Whopper Burger. Good idea, said Mrs. Quimby as she closed the refrigerator door. I'll see what I can do. Then Beezus came into the kitchen through the back door, dropped her books on the table, and flopped down on the chair with a gusty sigh. What was that all about? asked Mrs. Quimby, not at all worried. Nobody is any fun anymore, complained Beezus. Henry spends all of his time running around the track over at the high school getting ready for the Olympics in eight or 12 years. Or he and Robert study a book of world records trying to find a record to break. And Mary Jane practices the piano all the time. Beezus sighed again and Mrs. Mester says, we're going to do lots of creative writing, and I hate creative writing. I don't see why I had to get Mrs. Mester for seventh grade anyway. Creative writing can't be as bad as all that, said Mrs. Quimby. You just don't understand, complained Beezus. I can never think of stories, and my poems are stuff like, See the bird in the tree, he is singing to me. Te he, te he, added Ramona without thinking. Ramona, said Mrs. Quimby, that was not necessary. Because Beezus had been so grouchy lately, Ramona could manage only to be medium sorry. Psst. Oh, pest, said Beezus, noticing 
Ramona's work, she added, making a Christmas list in September is silly. Ramona calmly selected a yellow crayon. She was used to being called a pest. If I am a pest, you are a rotten dinosaur egg, she informed her sister. Mother, make her stop, said Beezus. When Beezus said this, Ramona knew she had won. The time had come to change the subject. Today's payday, she told her sister. Maybe we'll get to go to Whopper Burger for supper. Oh, mother, will we? Beezus' unha Beezus's unhappy mood disappeared as she swooped up Picky Picky, the Quimby shabby old cat who had strolled into the kitchen. He purred a rusty purr as she rubbed her cheek against his yellow fur. I'll see what I can do, said Mrs. Quimby. Smiling, Beezus dropped Picky Picky, gathered up her books, and went off to her room. Beezus was the kind of girl who did her homework on Friday instead of waiting until the last minute on Sunday. Beezus, Ramona asked in a quiet voice, Mother, why is Beezus so cross lately? Letting her sister overhear such a question would lead to real trouble. You mustn't mind her, whispered Mrs. Quimby. She's reached a difficult age. Ramona thought such an all-purpose excuse for bad behavior would be a handy thing to have. So have I, she confided to her mother. Mrs. Quimby dropped a kiss on top of Ramona's head. Silly girl, she said. It's just a phase Beezus is going through. She'll outgrow it. A contented silence fell over the house as three members of the family looked forward to supper at the Whopper Burger, where they could eat close and cozy in a booth their food brought to them by a friendly waitress who always said, there you go, as she set down their hamburgers and french fries. Ramona had decided to order a cheeseburger when she heard the sound of her father's key in the front door. Daddy, daddy, she shrieked, scrambling down from the car and running to meet her father as she opened the door. Guess what? Beezus, who had come from her room, answered before their father had a chance to guess. Mother said maybe we could go to the Whopper Burger for dinner. Mr. Quimby smiled and kissed his daughters before he held out a small white paper bag. Here, I brought you a little present. Somehow he did not look as happy as usual. Maybe he had had a hard day at the office of the van and storage company where he worked. His daughters pounced and opened the bag together. Gummy bears was their joyful cry. The chewy little bears were the most popular sweet at Glenwood School this fall. Last spring, powdered jello eaten from the package had been the fad. Mr. Quimby always remembered these things. Run along and divide them between you, said Mr. Quimby. I want to talk to your mother. Don't spoil your dinner, said Mrs. Quimby. The girls bore the bag off to Beezus' room, where they dumped the gummy bears onto the bedspread. First, they divided the cinnamon-flavored gummy bears, one for Beezus, one for Ramona. Then they divided the orange bears and the green, and as they were about to divide the yellow bears, both girls were suddenly aware that their mother and father were no longer talking. Silence filled the house. The sisters looked at one another. There was something unnatural about this silence. Uneasy, they waited for some sound, and then their parents began to speak in whispers. Beezus tiptoed to the door to listen. Ramona bit the head, off her red gummy bear. She always ate the toes last. Maybe they're planning a big surprise, she suggested, refusing to worry. I don't think so, whispered Beezus, but I can't hear what they're saying. Try listening through the furnace pipes, whispered Ramona. That won't work here. The living room is too far away. Beezus strained to catch her parents' words. I think something's wrong. Ramona divided her gummy bears, one heap to eat at home, and the other to take to school to share with friends if they were nice to her. Something is wrong, something awful, whispered Beezus. I can tell by the way they're talking. Beezus looked so frightened that Ramona became frightened too. What could be wrong? She tried to think of what might have what she might have done to make her parents whisper this way, but she had stayed out of trouble lately. She could not think of a single thing that could be wrong. That frightened her even more. She no longer felt like eating chewy little bears. She wanted to know why her mother and father were whispering in a way that alarmed Beezus. So did you guess what kind of story this is? Well, if you guess that it is fiction, you are correct. This is a made-up story about a made-up family. What kind of fiction is it? It's realistic fiction because everything in this story could really happen. It didn't really happen, 
but it could really happen. All right, boys and girls, we'll read the rest of chapter one tomorrow. Bye-bye.